you're essentially encouraging teenagers to eat an incredibly low fat diet. That is so risky. So Nina and Randa have a vegan YouTube channel where they promote a low fat vegan diet. It's actually a very low fat vegan diet. They do not eat any overt fats, overtly fatty foods, no nuts, no seeds, no avocado, no oils, because they say that these foods break them out. So when they were about 20, I think this was like four or five years ago, they all of a sudden got uh, like really severe cystic acne. They think this is because they started using um, like oily products on their skin, like makeup and stuff. So they went to a dermatologist, they were able to clear it up with antibiotics, but once they got off of the antibiotics, the acne came back. So eventually they figured out or suspected that it was certain high fat foods that they were eating. They were eating a vegan diet, they've been vegan since birth, but they thought that it was high fat foods like peanut butter that were making things worse, that were, you know, aggravating their acne. So they decided to completely avoid any, again, overtly fatty foods, and their acne cleared up within six weeks. So they have a few videos where they talk about this. That whole kind of story was mostly from their uh, interview with Brian Turner. They also have this video from a few years ago, I think like right after they cleared up their acne. And then they have this very recent one, this talk that they gave on clearing up their skin at Plant Stock. So if it were just them like sharing their experience and saying this is what works for us, then it it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, I understand that acne, especially acne like that, severe cystic acne is just horrible. And clearly they've found something that works for them. But unfortunately, they aren't just sharing their experience. They're also heavily promoting this way of eating, promoting it as the key to getting rid of acne. They've even written a book. They even did a pilot study seemingly to try to make this seem as credible and scientific as possible. Like I said, they even paid for a pilot study. They talk about this in the talk um, at Plant Stock. They also talk about it on their FAQ page for their book, The Clear Skin Diet. We put on a pilot study supervised by Dr. Steve Lewinda of Kaiser Permanente of 130 individuals with moderate to severe acne. Most participants were able to stop their acne with the diet. So in their talk, they share uh, some pictures and stories of other people who were successful on this very low fat vegan diet. Of course, they don't share any pictures or stories from the people who were not successful. Um, in fact, they, they don't mention this at all. They act like everyone who tried it was successful. Although again, um, as I just quoted from the FAQ, they say most participants were able to stop their acne with the diet. In other words, most, but not all. They even include vegan bodybuilder Brian Turner in this like list of people who've been successful. And they say that he followed um, a lot of the same principles as their diet. This is Brian Turner, and he used a lot of the same principles of the Clear Skin Diet. He was actually a coach for our Clear Skin Acne Intervention Program. And he had tried Accutane for two years, and it failed him. The only thing that worked was changing his diet. But what they don't say is that he doesn't avoid overt fats. He eats foods like peanut butter and tofu and avocado. I think it's kind of interesting what you guys are saying is um, maybe not only peanut butter, but you're saying peanut butter is something that triggered you guys really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. high I, fat foods. It's an interesting point because for me, peanut butter doesn't do anything. Yet according to Nina and Randa, one of the keys to getting rid of acne is eating a very low fat diet. So they've talked about their personal experience with the diet, they've talked about the experience of other people eating this way, clearing up their acne, and then they get into the science, quote unquote, behind this diet. So where does this diet come from? It comes from cultures around the world where nobody gets acne. So they talk about the Okinawans whose traditional diet was very, very low in fat. Um, they talk about some other cultures as well with low fat diets and no acne, but that's not the whole story. They are completely ignoring other cultures, people who did not eat super, super low fat and yet had no cases of acne, like the Inuit. The Inuit, of course, ate a very high fat animal-based diet and yet also had no acne. The Kitavans are another um, interesting example. They do eat a low fat diet, but it's much higher in fat compared to Nina and Randa's. It's about 20% fat compared to their like five to 10% fat. And most of their fat is saturated fat. Most of their fat is coming from coconut. Of course, Nina and Randa's diet is very, very low in saturated fat. The Kitavans eat very differently from Nina and Randa and you know, like your typical low fat vegan. 
and yet still no acne. And even the Okinawans, who Nita and Randa have used as an example, even they eat quite differently from, again, your typical low-fat vegan, how uh, Nina and Randa are eating. As they themselves point out, uh, most of their diet, the traditional Okinawan diet, is sweet potato. They eat very little rice, uh, very little of other grains as well, whereas Nina and Randa, as they say, they eat a ton of rice. Rice? Uh, is rice cool for you guys? Yeah, yeah, we rice, love We eat rice literally White or brown a multiple time. times a day. My point here is that all of this evidence that Nina and Randa have presented for their diet their personal experience, um, you know, the experience of other people, you know, their pilot study, and then also this cherry picked like narrative of what traditional cultures without acne have eaten. It just doesn't amount to much. Eating ultra low fat may work for some people, but to explicitly say that this is the key to clearing up acne is totally misleading and wrong. Again, not everyone saw results in their study. Uh, people like Brian have cleared up their cystic acne, but they are not completely avoiding, you know, fatty foods. People in the comments of their video say that the diet didn't work for them, but that eating more fat did. The truth is not much is known about the link between diet and cystic acne or even acne in general. It seems like there may be a link between certain foods and acne, specifically high glycemic foods um, and to a lesser extent dairy foods, but results are inconsistent. And there certainly isn't any quality research suggesting that cystic acne sufferers should avoid fatty foods completely. A pilot study of a few people that you, you can't even read. I mean, they say they document examples in the book, but this doesn't appear to be peer reviewed at all. It doesn't even seem like they had any sort of control. Yeah, that doesn't count as quality research. This is why I find what Nina and Randa are doing so frustrating, not just them, but anyone who's trying to sell a diet as the end all be all diet for clearing up acne. You know, people are going to be let down because this diet is not going to work for everyone. And when you're telling these people that this is going to work for you and then they try it and it doesn't, that's just a really awful thing to do to people. Also, when it hasn't worked for someone, then it's only served to delay them getting help, which can be really bad with acne because of scarring. The longer you wait, the longer you deal with this severe acne, the higher your chance of permanent scarring, which is why dermatologists are often so quick to recommend drugs like Accutane because it's very effective and they want to minimize scarring for their patients. And finally, the diet that they are promoting, this ultra low fat diet, may be harmful. No matter how much Nina and Randa insist that their diet of just fruits and vegetables and grains and beans, no nuts, no seeds, no avocado, no oils, as much as they insist that this diet is an abundance diet and that it's actually full of comfort foods. Starches, potatoes, sweet potatoes, whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. And these are all the foods that you can enjoy. They're comfort foods. You can have brownies, uh, baked fries, bean burgers, all super delicious. And our motto is we eat and enjoy. It is in fact a very restrictive diet. There is no major dietetic organization <laughs> promoting such a diet and promoting that people avoid healthy fats. But according to Nina and Randa, this is totally fine and totally safe. So again, from their FAQ page, but don't we need more good fats? Do I need an omega-3 supplement like DHA or EPA? And they say, no, the amount of fat in the clear skin diet is plenty. It's important to understand that vegans actually have more omega-3 fats in their blood compared to people who eat fish, meat, and a lot more fat. So first, no, vegans do not have more omega-3 fats in their blood. They are basing this off of one study which actually found that while the vegan women had the highest DHA levels compared to the other women eating uh, meat, eating fish, they had the lowest EPA levels and it was reversed for the vegan men. They had the highest EPA but the lowest DHA. And most importantly, there were only 10 vegans total five vegan men and five vegan women. That doesn't tell us much of anything. And they are completely ignoring the rest of the research, which shows that vegetarians and vegans tend to have lower levels of EPA and DHA. Now it's still not clear whether or not this actually matters, but 
both uh, vegan dietitians Jack Norris and Jenny Messina recommend not only meeting the DRI for ALA for omega threes um, with you know flax, chia, hemp, canola oil, you know foods that are high in omega threes, but also taking a DHA supplement. So to act as though their diet provides plenty and it's not a problem at all is absolutely ridiculous. We have no idea what the ideal amount of EPA, EPA and DHA in the blood is. We have no idea what the ideal amount in our diet is. And according to a lot of dietitians, it just makes sense. It's prudent to just go ahead and supplement to be sure, at the very least, to make sure you are eating omega-3 rich fatty foods. Again, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp, canola oil, which again, Nina and Randa are not doing. Second, back to that uh, first claim that the amount of fat in the clear skin diet is plenty, based on what? Again, we don't know what the, um, the optimal intake is for ALA, EPA, DHA, and there's no evidence that eating their diet, their, you know, fruit, vegetable, grain, and bean diet, that this provides plenty of fat in general. There is some evidence that eating this way has potential negative side effects. Low fat diets are often connected to low HDL, the quote unquote good cholesterol, and eating this way can also raise triglycerides for some people. Eating this way um, or trying to clear up your acne this way, especially if this is like the diet that you're starting with, it just seems like a really big risk to take given the potential side effects and the fact that the evidence is pretty clear that avocado, you know, walnuts, just nuts and seeds in general, and certain oils like canola and olive oil are healthy foods. Also, there could be a link between eating low fat and infertility, at least anecdotally. There, there seems to be a, a lot of people who eat this way or have eaten this way and have lost their period. Um, now, to be fair, often these women are also very thin. They're also um, exercising a lot, both of which um, can cause amenorrhea and infertility. I experienced this myself, as I talked about in this video. There also might be a connection between high glycemic foods and infertility, and many of these staple foods in Nina and Randa's diet, uh, you know, white potatoes and rice and bread, are high glycemic foods. I'm not suggesting that if you follow their diet, you're going to stop ovulating. There's just no way to, to know that. There's not a lot of research on this diet at all, probably because not a whole lot of people actually eat this way. And again, anecdotally, there are often confounding factors. You know, people who are eating low fat and uh, who lose their period, they're often, you know, they have a very low BMI, they're over-exercising. But I think it's worth mentioning, uh, really because Nina and Randa present the diet as just perfect and like there are no downsides and it's perfectly healthy and yeah, it provides plenty of fat, no problem. No. If it were me, if I were dealing with severe cystic acne, this would not at all be the first diet that I tried. This would be like bottom of the barrel, <laughs> completely desperate. Um, I'd probably start by, you know, cutting out processed foods and sugary foods, eliminating dairy, assuming that I was eating dairy, or I'd just get on Accutane, you know, assuming that a dermatologist recommended it, assuming that I had tried, uh, you know, the standard like salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide for two months. Anyway, speaking of Accutane, in Nina's article, this diet finally cleared my cystic acne when nothing else worked, which Side note, this is a very misleading title. As I said earlier, they have been vegan since birth. They have not tried other diets. They have, they say in one video that they've pretty much eaten like a low fat kind of McDougal style diet their whole life. So basically they've eaten a low fat vegan diet and a super low fat vegan diet. They do say in the interview with Brian Turner that they tried a low carb vegan diet for some amount of time, I don't think they say, and they say that it did help to clear up their skin, but that they were miserable because they were only eating like mostly quinoa and avocado. When we were like trying to change our diet, we were like, oh, you know, this acne is probably diet related. We went on low carb oh, vegan, no. vegan, which is literally is quinoa. Yeah. No keto. Like <laughs> so not cool. Quinoa and, and avocado, that's it. Like quinoa and avocado. Cool. And our skin did improve, but like I was like, I lost like 10 pounds in a week, probably water weight because there was no fruit. Yeah, quinoa is not low carb. One cup of cooked quinoa has 34 
net carbs, 34 grams net carbs. I don't know what sort of diet they were eating, but it doesn't sound like it was low carb. Anyway, we're supposed to be talking about Accutane. So um, back to the, to the article, Nina says, all the doctors said the same thing, Accutane, but we were reluctant. Several people we know had had bad reactions to the drug. A close friend of ours believed Accutane was responsible for her colitis. She had to drop out of college to regain the weight. And they repeat basically the same sort of thing elsewhere, um, again in their interview with Brian Turner. Well, we had um, some other relatives or cousins who had taken Accutane and um, they yeah, lost like their joint hair, hair, they lost their hair. Yeah. There was a lot of bad side effects. And also in this video from a few years ago. We've had some friends go on Accutane and their hair has fallen out, they've become depressed, and they're your, like, your bones get weak, you're in pain, it's just like, there has to be another alternative. So Accutane, or isotretinoin, actually Accutane was the brand, but it hasn't been around, I think, for like almost 10 years. Um, but of course, everyone knows it as Accutane, but the active ingredient is isotretinoin, I think is how you say it. Um, it is a very, very effective treatment for severe cystic acne. It's not something that you would give to, you know, someone who's like, ah, I have a few pimples, right? That's not what it's for. Um, because it is a serious drug with serious side effects, particularly uh, involving fetal development, which is why in the US, women have to take, uh, I believe it's two pregnancy tests before getting on Accutane, two negative pregnancy tests. They have to take uh, more pregnancy tests during treatment. Treatment is often, I think, four to six months. And they also have to agree to have two forms of birth control. So you absolutely do not want to get pregnant while you are taking Accutane. But for the person, for the person who is taking Accutane, the most common side effects are pretty mild. It's mostly like dry skin, uh, chapped lips. And the more serious side effects, the one that you often hear people talk about are rare. Some have suggested that there is a link between Accutane and IBD, but this isn't supported by the research so far. And if there is a link, it might be more likely that it's just having severe acne that increases one's risk for developing IBD, not Accutane. There also may be a causal connection between Accutane and depression, although that's not clear either. Point is, this is not a drug for acne. This is a drug for severe acne, for cystic acne, for people who have not responded to over-the-counter treatment, again, salicylic acid, uh, benzoyl peroxide. It is very, very effective, but again, it is a very, very serious drug. So the benefits have to outweigh the risks. To be clear, I'm not suggesting that everyone with cystic acne should get on Accutane. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dermatologist. Um, I'm also not suggesting that Nina and Randa made the wrong decision by you know, altering their diet instead of getting on Accutane. This is a very uh, personal decision. Obviously, it's something that each individual has to decide for themselves in consultation with a dermatologist, ideally both a dermatologist and a GP. But to act as though it is this super dangerous drug for the person taking it is just not true. Again, serious side effects are rare. And as I mentioned earlier, waiting with cystic acne means permanent scarring. It's why dermatologists are like, hey, get on Accutane. They want to help prevent that as much as possible. And not everyone has positive results with changing their diet, whether they're trying ultra low fat, whether they're trying low carb or something like that. Some people just don't see results. And people have ended up waiting because of this fear mongering, this fear mongering from people like Nina and Randa, also Brian Turner, who talks a lot about the dangers of Accutane and like depression. And they regret it because they finally did get on Accutane, but they waited so long that now they have scarring that you can't really do anything about. Again, I'm not suggesting that Accutane is the answer. I can understand both sides. I can understand wanting to go to Accutane right away, but I can also understand wanting to just change your diet and see if that helps too, especially since there is, again, some evidence when we're talking about like processed foods and dairy, and certainly, you know, getting rid of processed foods is going to be healthier for you in general, right? Again, it's a personal decision, but it's really hard to make that decision in an objective way when people are yelling at you that, oh, my friend says that it caused her colitis, or oh, this friend says that it gave him depression. It's not helpful. You know, I don't wanna come down too hard on them because I, I've i seen their pictures and wow, like it's it's really, it was really severe. And I don't know what that's like. You know, I've had like 20 pimples in my entire life, you know, and I've never had anything like that. Um, I don't know what it's like to not want to leave the house because 
you think you look terrible. You know, I just, I don't know what that's like. I'm sympathetic is what I'm saying. And I, I do believe that their hearts are in the right place, so to speak. I do believe that they really want to help people and they, they are still so ecstatic that they were able to clear up their acne. I just wish they would tone down the like, this is the key to doing it, which they do sometimes. <laughs> like if you watch the interview where they're being interviewed by Brian Turner, like they even admit, oh yeah, everybody's different. You know, different diets work for different people. People always ask me the question on, on my YouTube, like what should I not eat? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. You're yeah, like, for right. sure. Everybody is different. But when they are selling their book, which is what they're doing, they're selling their book, then it's, oh no, this is, this is the key, right? This is the key to getting rid of acne. And oh yeah, look at Brian Turner. We're not going to mention that he actually does eat some, you know, uh, high fat plant foods. We're not going to mention that. Really? We're also not going to mention the people who have told us on our own videos that this diet didn't work for them or that eating more fat worked for them. Really? And oh yeah, don't worry about eating no fatty foods and only eating beans and grains and fruits and vegetables. Really? It's just like the weight loss stuff, right? We, we want there to be one diet, low fat vegan or low carb or whatever. Like we want there to be one diet that works for everyone and is super effective and everybody lose weight, loses weight and yay, no more obesity. But that's like, the evidence is clear that's not how it works, that these diets work for some people, very few people. For most of us, diets just don't work. Maybe we can lose the weight for a while, but we end up gaining it back. For acne, maybe ultra low fat works, maybe low carb works, maybe just a, a healthier diet in general, you know, just cutting out sugar works. We don't know, we can't foresee that, you know, it's, it's just, it's just trial and error. And I think we really need to be careful. Nina and Randa particularly need to be careful because I'm, I'm assuming that their audience is made up of a lot of young women, right? I mean, a lot of people who are dealing with cystic acne are in their teens, right? So you're, you're essentially encouraging teenagers to eat an incredibly low fat diet. That is so risky. So yeah, thanks to everyone who suggested this video. People have been suggesting I talk about Nina and Randa for a while, and I haven't because, well, I watched a couple of their What I Ate Todays, and it seemed like they ate a lot of protein. I remember they were eating something. They just put like a whole can of beans, um, you know, for one one like meal, one serving, right? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it looks like they're eating eating pretty well. They're actually eating like a lot of beans and protein and stuff. That's, that's cool, you know, a fair amount at least. Um, and I guess I didn't notice that like, oh, wow, they aren't eating any fats. <laughs> and someone told me in the comments on a recent video of mine that like, yeah, they don't eat any avocado or anything. It's like, oh, okay. I thought they were just standard low fat. I didn't know they were like ultra, ultra low fat. So, um, so that's why I started looking into more of their, their acne stuff and their claims and was concerned and a little bit frustrated, but not really surprised if I'm being honest. Anyone selling a book called The Clear Skin Diet, they're probably, probably going to be making some pretty grandiose claims. Anyway, thanks for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, that's cool. Support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan, and I will have a new video very soon.